Just remain standing now. Amen. Just remain standing now. Uh, let's let's get our offering tonight. Appreciate everybody giving like y'all to. Uh, it takes a lot of us to support that gang of young'uns. I'm telling you, you got kids, you know what I'm talking about. You buy them clothes and they, they wear them twice if they're too little. And uh, that's why you go to, them, go to them dead man's store to get their clothes. That's what they need to wear to school. Um, they, get, they grow out of them too quick. But let's honor the Lord tonight and let's give and everybody do right and God will bless you for it, okay? I hope you'll give something special this evening and the Lord bless you for it. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for the privilege that we have coming to church. Lord, we don't deserve it, but we thank you for it. I ask you, God, that you might move here this evening, do what ought to be done, touch every heart, touch every life. Lord, thank you, God, for all those kids out there and keep them safe tonight. Lord, just give them a big time. I pray as they grow up that they'll look back and the most fun times and most meaningful times they've ever had in their life were at church or with their church family. Lord, I pray that. I pray that they'd put you first in everything, keep them out of this old world, keep them safe. Lord, I pray that you bless them. God, please work in their lives, and, and Lord, take care of them. God, I pray that you'd bless our church. Lord, keep our buses rolling. Fix them, Lord. Touch every driver, touch every worker. Help us, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody settle down now. We'll get our Bibles open and we're going to have a little study tonight. won't be too long. Uh, and I want to talk about our, our uh, uh, camp meeting is less than two months from now. We've already got preachers. Somebody called me from Florida yesterday wanting to know when camp meeting was. Um, somebody called me from Florida yesterday and said they was at a church and said that they was um, a group of singers from West Virginia got up from a free will Baptist church the other night. And so they got up and the power of God started moving and people was getting right and, and they was praying, you know, and everything and people was really going to the altar and, and everything. And uh, said the man gave a testimony and he said, uh, he said, boy, I tell you, you said somebody gave me a box of tapes, preaching tapes. And he called my name and I said, listen, one old Danny Castle called uh, the Pony Express and said he talked for five minutes about that uh, somewhere down in Florida. And uh, he just wanted to call me that and tell me to be a, just to be a blessing to it. And so you know what? The Word of God is not bound. That amazes me about the Bible. It just goes everywhere. It goes everywhere. And the Lord uses stuff like that. I had one preacher from Florida call me twice. And he said, I'll pay you a plane ticket if you'll fly down here to Jacksonville and preach that sermon at our church Sunday morning. And I said, I can't do it. I said, I can't just take off on Sunday morning like that. I got a bunch of people... The, I hope likes me. I, I, they act like I do anyway. Some of them, and uh, but uh, that's the word of God, powerful, quick, sharper than a two-edged sword, and so we appreciate that. But uh, all the emails and stuff like that, it's a blessing. So I try to pass it along to y'all once in a while to let you know that it's not in vain, and that uh, uh, the Lord's Lord's blessed it. But anyway, here's here's what I want to do tonight. I want us to look at a verse of scripture that caught my eye and heart as I was reading through the book of Job. Job chapter 22. I've been reading through here and there's just bunches of them, just bunches of verses of Scripture. And one thing you have to notice about the book of Job is sometimes people pull out a verse of Scripture out of the book of Job, just how Brother Mike, and, uh, and they'll say the Bible says and try to make it like God has said all this. God didn't say everything in the book of Job. It's recorded in the Bible. Sometimes it's one of Job's friends speaking, and sometimes it's Job speaking, and sometimes it's 
God speaking. That don't mean it's not inspired. That just means everything them guys said, they wasn't, the Holy Ghost wasn't leading them to say it. He's recording what they said. I hope you understand that. Uh, like, uh, like the devil. The devil spoke in the Bible. So some people got this idea of everything in the Bible, God said it right to me. No, God didn't say everything in the Bible. The Bible is inspired, but he, the devil said part of it. And Job's friends said part of it. Balaam said part of it. The donkey said part of it. Uh, they, so you got to, when you read the Bible, you got to understand who's talking. You got to understand who they're talking to. And you got to understand the context in which they say what they say. And you got to keep that in mind, the book of Job. However, what I'm going to talk about tonight, in my opinion, is good. And I believe the Holy Spirit put it in there for us. All right, here's the verse. Chapter 22, verse 21. Let's everybody look at this verse. And I'm going to read the rest of the scripture. And then I'm going to talk about this thing a little bit tonight. Job 22, 21. Acquaint now thyself with him. Acquaint now thyself with him. What does that mean? Hold your finger there. It means acquaint him. Get to know him. Get to know him. And that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. Hold your finger there. We ought to acquaint ourselves with the Lord. How good do you know the Lord? I mean, people ask me, say, you know Danny Castle? Yeah. How good do you know him? Are you on speaking terms with him? They said, well, I'm up in Marion years. You know, we, we fought battles all the time. And our church, you know, it's controversial. And they either loved it or hated it. And that's what it's supposed to be. Somebody, I never, I've lived in Marion all my life and have never been called for jury duty. I'm the only adult that I know in the county that has never been called for jury duty. And you know what? Yeah, my feelings ain't hurt one bit. I have no desire to be on the jury. I know people say, ooh, I want to go in there and convict people. I have no desire to be on the jury duty. Sit there all day long, listen to them talk about drunks, hitting somebody or something. And uh, uh, they called a woman for jury duty. And they, they asked you about your religious affiliation. Horse went to church to them and they asked her, Are you, do you know Danny Castle? She said, yes. They said, are you close friends with Danny Castle? She said, yes. And they said, you're dismissed. She didn't have to do it. Because they thought she would have our views. That's a compliment, bro. That's a good testimony. I'm glad the whole town knew we was against alcohol. Amen? Amen. You know preachers are taking a soft stand or no stand on alcohol these days. Like, you know, it's, it's hard to find a preacher now that even believes it's, it's wrong to drink. It's hard to find one nowadays. You'd be surprised. But anyway, she was asked, how well do you know him? And I would ask that about you tonight. How well do you know the Lord? How well are you acquainted with him? He said, acquaint. He said, acquaint now thyself with him. Now let's look what happens when you get acquainted with God and be at peace. You reckon that might be why you ain't got no peace in your life? You ain't acquainted with the Lord like you ought to be. Thereby good shall come unto you. You have somebody said, everything in my life's going wrong. Maybe you need to acquaint yourself with the Lord more. And look here. Be- receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth and lay up his words in thy heart. If thou return to the Almighty, if you'll really get right, Thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust. You ever heard of gold dust? Gold as dust. And the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense. That means God will protect you. And thou shalt have plenty of silver. I've got, uh, I run into people all the time needing money, needing help. Matter of fact, I was supposed to help a lady tomorrow. She called me and uh, talking about how bad off she is. She's called me like four times this week and said they're going to cut her power off Friday. And she don't. And she's 71 years old. And uh, man, my heart just breaks for her. It, it breaks for her. You know, you have people all the time call wanting help, about three or four a Sunday. And some you help, some you don't. Um, Abraham Lincoln said, somebody asked me today, they said, how do you know who to help and who not to help? 
And the answer is what Abraham Lincoln said, you are never doing somebody a favor when you do for them what they could be doing for themselves. Good rule to go by. You are never doing somebody a favor when you do for them what they could and should be doing for themselves. But she's 71 years old and bad shape and about ready to cut her power off. And so I'm going to go by there and pay a little bit on it tomorrow, Lord willing. And uh, the Bible says here, if you'll do what God wants you to do, He'll bless you financially. That don't mean to sound like a TV preacher. I'm not saying if you live right, you'll get rich. I am saying if you'll do right, God might help you financially. That ain't why you live right. But that's just an added blessing. It's a known fact that if a man quits drinking and quits drugs and works a job every day, God will help you and you'll be better off financially. Amen. If you take drugs, you'll never have nothing. You never will. I've got a cousin right now been calling me, begging me to help him. And I've tried to help get him a couple of jobs and it didn't work out and he begged me all the time and he has, he's uh, 50 years old and has nothing, absolutely nothing and it's all because of drugs. It'll take everything you've got. Drugs will take everything you've got and eventually your health and your life. It'll take everything you've got away from you. You can have nothing. There's a high price for low living. And if you'll, the Bible said if you'll return to the Lord that you'll have plenty of silver. Verse 25 said you'll have plenty of silver. You'll have enough money to pay your bills. And then verse 26 said, Thou shalt have the delight in the Almighty, shalt lift up thy face unto God. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto Him, and He shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. And the light shall shine upon thy ways. Isn't that a blessing? You go to camp meeting and shout and have a good time. When men are cast down, thou shalt say, There is lifting up, and he shall save the humble person. He shall deliver the island of the innocent. It is delivered by the pureness of thine hands. And all that comes when you do what verse 21 says, acquaint now thyself with him. Acquaint now thyself with him. So I'm going to talk, uh, we're going to study a little bit about tonight about how to get acquainted with God. You say, can you really know God and be acquainted with him? Sure you can. You can be acquainted with him. So I wrote this down this season. I never heard nobody talk about this, but that verse just grabbed me. Acquaint now thyself with him. Now when I get through tonight, I hope when you leave this church that you'll say, my desire is to get to know him better. To get to know him better. Paul said that I may know him. The power of his resurrection. The fellowship of his suffering. How well do you know the Lord tonight? Well, the way to get acquainted with somebody is first of all to meet them. Um, I know that there is a President Obama. I know that. I've seen him on TV. I've heard him talk. I've seen his face on magazines and pictures on, at the grocery store, everywhere. I know there is a President Obama. I do not know President Obama. I know there is one, but I don't know him. I've never met him. That's what a lot of people are about God. They know there is a God. There's got to be a God somewhere, but they've never met him. The first thing you've got to do is meet him. I met him, as we sing in the choir, I met him at the foot of Calvary. I met him the night I got saved. I met the Lord the night I got saved. The night I come and I said, Lord, I know I'm a sinner and I'm sorry. Lord, will you save me? I met Jesus right then. That's the first thing you got to do. I've, I've, I've heard people say, I met this man wanting to meet you. That preacher is here from Texas. He called me this evening, want me to come out there and preach. And they come that night and he said, I've been wanting to meet you. I've been wanting to meet you. The first thing you got to do to get acquainted with somebody is meet them. Uh, I've met a lot of people that I want to meet. I met a few uh, uh, well-known preachers. I've met I met uh, Jack Hiles, and I met Roloff, and I met uh, or I seen Roloff. I didn't actually meet him. And I met John R. Rice and Dr. Seitler and Mays Jackson, Billy Kelly, and Dr. Ruckman, and all of them. And it was a it was a pleasure to me just to meet them guys, just to meet them. I've met a few people of what the world, you all have heard me tell about. I was on a plane one time and uh, going in Texas and they, word started going back through the plane that uh, one of them old country singers on there, old, uh, who is that guy? I mean, old, the old greasy hair long, um, Waylon Jennings, Waylon Jennings. And I, is he still alive? 
He, did he die? I did not know that. But anyway, it's been about 10, 15 years ago. But he said, Waylon Jennings is on the plane. And I tried to think, do I even know one of his songs? And I didn't. And I still don't. What's, his, what's one of his songs? Amanda. I don't even know that. What's Amanda? I don't even know that. Is there one that I know? Come on home and sing the blues to daddy. <laughs> that sounds like a winner. <laughs> well, anyway, I, I never was really a fan of his. Uh, I know Johnny Cash. I've heard Johnny Cash songs and, and, and Willie Nelson on the road again. I know them. Oh, yeah? Is that right? Well, anyway, they said, well, and Jennings on the plane. Well, and Jennings on the plane. So when we got off the plane... I thought, well, I'm going to give him a track and witness to him. And he had all these people crowd around him. He had on a long leather jacket down, down the floor, just le- black leather, high old greasy hair. And I walked right up to him and I said, you Mr. Jennings? He said, yes. And I, I said, here, you know, Jesus loves you just like I do everybody else. I said, here, I'm going to tell you about your best friend, Jesus. He said, well, thank you. Like that. And uh, I went on. You know what? I got to meet him. I remember back when Boys to Men, y'all remember Boys to Men, a little singing group, little boy group. That was one of the first little boy groups a long time ago. Well, I met them in, in an airport in uh, Los Angeles. And I was there, and they was all there. They had their Boys to Men jacket on. They had done a concert there last night. And everybody was around, crowded around, wanting autographs and stuff. I said, okay, here we go. And uh, I went over to them and I said, hey, you guys. And they all looked at me and I said, you know what? I said, the Lord loves you and he wants, he wants to love you. He wants to be your best friend. And when I looked back and he said, that's right, that's right. He's my personal savior. I said, well, good. Use it. I said, y'all need to use your talent for the Lord. And uh, I just walked off and left him standing there. I've done a few like that, you know. But you know what? The greatest thing i ever done is when I got acquainted with Jesus. They don't even come close. I don't get up here and talk about them nuts all, every Sunday, but I talk about him. So I met him. They said a lady one time, she was reading this book on a, on a train, back when people used to travel by train, and she was reading this book, and a man was sitting beside her, and he said, hey, I like that book. And she said, it's the most boring in many a day. And he said, uh, he looked at her and he said, you know what, I hate to tell you this, but I'm the author. She said, really? And she met him and started talking to him, and he told a little bit about his life, and she read that book and loved it. It made all the difference when she met the author. That's why people don't like the Bible. That's why people don't read the Bible. That's why people don't enjoy the Bible. They don't know the author. Buddy, when you meet the author, it makes all the difference. Because you think, I know the God that wrote that. So to get acquainted with him, you've got to meet him. The next thing. You know when you get acquainted with somebody, you say, I'd love to get acquainted. Girls say, oh, that, that guy, he's cute. I want to get acquainted with him. Boys say, oh, that's a pretty woman. I want to get acquainted. I'd like to meet her. I'd like to know her. How do you get acquainted with somebody? The second thing is you've got to listen to what they're going to say. You want to listen to what they want to say. And there's the Bible. You want to know their likes, their dislikes. How do you find out what God likes and what he don't like? Here it is right here. You find out God... God reveals his character and his personality through his word. I told somebody today, they asked me what I was going to talk about. I told them this, and I said, the way to get to know God is to know the Bible. People who don't know the Bible don't know the Lord. You don't know him too good. The better you know that book, the better you know him. It's the written word. You say, if I was going to know God, you know what a lot of people think the way you know God Go out there on Mount, Mount Mitchell and look at rocks and trees and stuff. That ain't God. Trees ain't God. Rocks ain't God. Rivers ain't God. The Grand Canyon ain't God. Niagara Falls ain't God. That's just a messed up part of what used to be a perfect creation. That's a fallen world cursed by sin. It ain't even perfect. People say, let's go look at the beautiful world God made. Listen, that, it didn't look like this when he made it. It didn't look nothing like this. It didn't have briars and thorns and old ugly bushes and animals that buy. I was mowing the grass yesterday. Man, I got bee stung right there. And I I, I about went all summer without getting bee stung. And got it yesterday. I mean, a yellow jacket popped me right there. 
And I'm telling you, he lay, he was just, he was just doing like that, stinging me harder and harder. And I went, wham, knocked it off. And I made a few more circles and that thing started hurting worse and worse and worse and worse. It started going up into my shoulder. And I ain't allergic to them or nothing like that, I don't guess. Never had worried about it when I got bee stung. And, uh, and buddy, I tell you, that thing hurt. And we come down and played ball last night. And even that thing, it was hurting. And today it's been itching all day. You know what? When God made this world, there wasn't no such thing as that. Bees didn't sting you. Spiders wouldn't bite you. Snakes wouldn't hurt you. This, this ain't God. This, cre- this is just a fallen creation. You want to know God? You stick your nose in this right here. People say, well, I saw on the Discovery Channel all the wonders of the, of the ocean. You want to know God? Put your nose in this book right here. Read the Bible. I, you heard me say, the average teenager spends three hours a day online now. Three hours per day. Cell phone, internet, computer, three hours a day. If you spent that much time reading your Bible, you could read the whole thing through in three weeks or less, less than three weeks. There's the way you know God, brother. I was 19. I was 18. I was 18 and read about 120 chapters one day, in one day. So don't give me this baloney about you're young and, and, and you'll do it one of these days. I was 18 and I wasn't a reader either. Still ain't. I read the Bible, but I never was one of these people just sit down and just read and read and read and read and read and read and read. I never have been, still not. But I read that book. I put my nose in there and I read it and 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 read it. First thing you know, I started looking at stuff like he looks at it. First thing you know, I started seeing things the way he's seen it. First thing you know, everything that come up, I started thinking, well, he said this and he said that. Um, on the way to church tonight, uh, Shelly, uh, Jordan and Shelly, uh, was down. I had to go pick them up and they rode the church down here with me tonight. And Shelly, uh, Brother Marvin's daughter, she said, she said, Brother Danny, I got called a Jesus girl. I got called a Jesus girl. And it hurt my feelings. I said, Man, you ought to shout. She said, Why? I said, Cause the Bible said, Blessed are you, where men shall revile you and say all manner of evil against you for my name's sake. And she said, Is that in the Bible? I said, Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? When you know him, when you know him, she didn't even know she was supposed to shout. She said she about started crying. She said one of her brother's friends said, you're a Jesus girl and laughed at her. I said, you ought to jump about that high and said, glory to God. Listen, that's the greatest thing. Listen, if somebody made, I said, the Bible, she said, where's that at? And I said, well, it's around Matthew 5, 6, 7, somewhere in line. It was around the Sermon on the Mount. And she looked it up and found it. She said, there it is, there it is. You see, when you're acquainted with the Bible, you're acquainted with the Lord. When you're, I knew what God thought about that because I read His Word. You cannot know what God thinks about a situation. I don't, what do y'all do when somebody says something about uh, them, them people over in Asheville applying for a same-sex marriage license? Yes, it's on the news. Uh, what do y'all do? You know what I do? I say, well, the Bible says, the Bible says, because I've got acquainted with what God said. The big news in Asheville was I think a lesbian couple was trying to get licensed. I, I get the high school news where I live. I guess down here y'all get Charlotte or whatever, but uh, some, you still get high school. It, Dolly come out of Dollywood today and announced they was making a $300 million addition in a new a roller coaster. You go backwards and forwards, and they made a big deal out of her. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, uh, they had it on there about, about uh, same-sex marriage couple. Well, immediately... We think the Bible says. The Bible says. If you're watching Dr. Phil and they're saying, well, this man and this woman, they disagree on this, so do y'all think they should divorce? And just on it, if you're acquainted with the Lord, you automatically think, no, that's not what the Lord wants. If you're acquainted with somebody, you know their likes and their dislikes, and you want to hear what they've got to say. That's why you come to church. That's one of the reasons. One of the reasons you come to church, you want to hear what God has to say. I'm not God. I'm just a preacher. But if the Lord gives me something through His Word, the Lord will speak through the preaching of the Word of God. I, every time I hear a preacher preach, the Lord speaks to me. I mean, them young guys at camp, 15, 16 years old, if you'll listen, they'll say something that God just rings your bell with. The Lord will speak to them. If a man's called to preach... God will speak to him. He's not God. 
He's nothing special, but he's just a vessel that the Lord pours like, like pouring water through a pipe. And we preachers got to empty ourselves so it, the Spirit can flow through us and get out on you. And uh, we need to listen to what they got to say. Uh, you, you read Psalms. You read the Old Testament. You read the Proverbs. Um, you like to listen to people preach. Uh, you, you, um, you, you have the house. You have the dog. You have the kids. You have your job. You have clothes. You have food. You have the yard. You have a habit. You have, everything is geared through the Word of God. If you're a Christian, you want to even dress like the Lord would have you to dress. You know, people out there in the world don't even think about that. You know, people out there in the world, they just wear whatever's in fashion. It never dawns on them that God might have a preference how you dress. He does. He does. Uh, he, wants, he wants you to be in modest apparel. That means not calling attention to your body or showing your nakedness. And, uh, and, and our food, God has a preference. Uh, the way we spend our time, God has a preference. Uh, the way we uh, live in our household, He has a preference. You want to know what he has to say. All right? Does anybody have something you want to say right there? And if not, I've got some other things to say about how to get acquainted with him. All right, if you want to get acquainted with, with uh, Brother Clark, first of all, you'd want to meet him. Hi, I'm Danny Castle. I've heard about you. Nice to meet you. Then I want to know what he's got to say. I'll listen to him talk. There's another thing you've got to do. You've got to talk to him. You've got to talk to him. That's, of course, praying. Tell him, if I want to get acquainted with you, I want to tell him what's in my heart and my needs. Now, listen, I hit on this Sunday night, but I want to hit on it again. Folks, we need to pray. We need to pray more, and we need to pray more sincerely. Uh, one, of the, one of the hardest things you've ever done in your life is keep a consistent prayer life in your Christian life. I know, I've been doing this since I was 18. I'll hear a preacher preach on it, and I said, man... I need to get back in the prayer closet. And boy, I, I remember one time I was going to pray 30 minutes every night. I was going to pray from 10.30 to 11. I was going to pray from 10.30 to 11. That was a long time ago. I said from 10.30 to 11, I'm going to pray. And I did real good for a while. And then I went off and preached revival. And I preached revival. They wanted to go out and eat. And it was, 10, it was 11 o'clock and I was on the way out. I said, well, I missed my prayer time. Then you miss it another night. Then you miss it another. First thing you know, you ain't doing it. You'll say, I'm going to pray every morning for 10 minutes before I go to work. You'll do it pretty good for a while. And then you slack, something will happen, knock you out one morning. Something will happen, knock you out another morning, and then you quit. We're all like that. You do real good for a while. And first thing you know, you think, man, I ain't even praying at all. Next thing you know, you catch yourself going down the road. Lord, help me today. Lord, bless all the kids, you know. And that's your prayer life. Nothing wrong with that if that's all you can do. But we need to take time and set that time apart and pray, folks. You listen to me? We need to set time apart and pray. There needs to be prayer time. You know how I know this? Jesus did it. Jesus went out and prayed all night sometime. He didn't do that because he was backslid. He, done that. he didn't do that because he, he was trying to get the victory. He had the victory. He was the victory. He was showing us that before a major battle, you spend time alone with God. And every great Christian in church history had a deep prayer life. They might have differed in other things. They might have differed in beliefs. They might have differed in, in denomination. They might have differed in, in uh, race. They might have differed in cultural standing and beliefs. They might have differed in, in standing in society. They might have been rich, poor, but every one of them prayed. Every one of them prayed. Every preacher that ever got anything done for God prayed. Everyone that ever accomplished things had to pray. They might have differed in education. They might have differed in style. They might have differed in, in their approach. They might have differed in the way they preached. Some of them, there's been preachers just stand right here and never move and preach. Others run all over the building. They've been preached real loud. Some of them not as loud. But every one of them that God ever used prayed. We've got to pray. 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 Instead of trying to figure it out, pray it out. I hear people all the time say, well, I've got all this going on in my life and I'm trying to figure it out. Instead of trying to figure it out so much, pray it out. Pray it through. Pray through. Listen, I've got things in my life I'd like to figure out. I've got things to do, decisions to make about our church that, that I'll say, well, if I do this, then this will happen. If I do that, that'll happen. 
if we spend this money, we need it over here, but don't spend this money, we need it over here, there ain't no answer. You know the answer? Pray it out. Pray it out. You can't figure it out, pray it out. If you need help, if you need money, if you need a job, if you need a mate, if you need an education, if you need a house, if you need a car, if you need a healing, if you need, pray it out. Pray it out. You do believe in praying, don't you? Don't y'all believe it's a, you ain't wasting your time praying. You are not wasting your time praying. You're not, that's like saying, here's God and He owns everything and I'm wasting my time asking for it. He wants us to come to Him. The Lord wants us to pray. Pray and believe it. Pray and believe it. Now, I, you say, well, Brother Danny, God always answers your prayers. No, I mean, I pray a lot of stuff that ain't happened yet. I mean, that don't mean it ain't going to. And I tell you what I've done, I've seen enough of my prayers answered to make me believe in keeping on praying. Amen? I prayed stuff and it didn't happen. But I just figured God had some other plan or something that I don't know about or something was wrong with my request. It sure ain't nothing wrong with Him. And I prayed some brother and it did happen. And I prayed some things and God did answer my prayer. We've seen God answer prayer right here at Shining Light Baptist Church. I'm going to be praying hard for Sunday night. I hope you will. I hope you'll fast if God lays it on your heart uh, for Sunday night. I'd like to see the Lord just get all over our kids. You know, we had a great camp, and the Lord's blessed our church ever since camp. We've stepped up a notch. Let's pray the Lord give us another good hit Sunday morning, Sunday night. Every one of us, let's all pray that God will hit in here Sunday morning, Sunday night. Wouldn't that be great? Let's do that. All right? The last thing I want to say, if I'm going to meet this man, I'm going to shake his hand and say, I'm Danny Castle. What's your name? I'm going to listen to what he's got to say, and then I want him to listen to what i got to say, and there's one more thing. You know, another way to get acquainted with somebody is be around their family. Be around their family. You be around somebody's family, you'll get to know them. His friends, not his enemies. I've heard people say, well, I heard this about Danny Castle. He's been hanging around my enemies. You want to know me? Hang around my friends. Uh, people all the time say, my girls tell me all the time. Uh, Corey told me the other day, she is up sometime uptown, and some guy come in taking pictures. I don't know what he's doing. And he said, are you one of Danny Castle's girls? And she said, yeah. And they ask, they ask my girls all the time, how's Danny doing? How's Danny doing? I think, you want to, ha- you want to know how somebody's doing? Know their family. Well, what, what did he do growing up? Well, how long have y'all lived here? Now, where did he work? That's the way you get to know somebody. Hang around their family. They tell stuff about them. His family talk about them. Well, guess how you get to know God, people? Hang around his family. Come to his house. We have a big dinner here every single Sunday. You know, you ever go to grandma's for dinner? And boy, grandma puts out a big... That's what we have. We serve hot gospel meals three times a week, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Put it out on the table, brother, with fried chicken, spiritually speaking, and green beans and, and, and corn on the cob and iced tea and strawberry shortcake and baked potatoes and steak and everything right from the Word of God. Come and eat it in fellowship with the family. That's right. Come and eat it in fellowship with the family. Um, uh, if, if you're around my family, you learn about me. Amen? Uh, you, you, you learn how to treat people. You learn how to treat people. You know where I get my example on how to treat people? From the way Jesus did. I, I get accused, just like me going to help this woman tomorrow morning. I don't even know her. Never even met her. But the Lord put it on my heart. I mean, I just, how, I mean, how, how are you going to tell a 71-year-old woman they're getting ready to cut her power off? And, and REA don't have no mercy. They don't have no mercy. They will cut it off. I've had them do it. And seen people have it done. And, and people used to tell me, they said, Danny, you're too good to people. And some people have took advantage of my generosity. But the reason I do that is because that's what Jesus did. I'd rather stand before God and be accused of being too good to people as stand before God and be accused of being hard-hearted and mean, cold people. Now, t- people t- if people find out you're a good, a, a free-hearted person, they'll take advantage of you. I've had it happen to me this week. But I'd rather stand before God and say I was too good to people than I was, than I was cold to them and mean to them. You say, well, aren't you afraid people take advantage of you? 
Yeah, it happens regularly. Regularly. I had a guy the other day. He said, uh, will you let me borrow $40? I'll pay you back, pay you back. Well, it's been a while. And I let him borrow $40 and I ain't seen him since. And that's just one of the stories. And, uh, and, and then he sent me a text and said, please, will you help me get some work? Please, will you help me with work? By the way, I know I still owe you $40. You know, I'll never see that $40. I ain't even looking for it. I just chalk that up to, you say, well, why'd you do something that stupid? Because Jesus set that example. And I'm telling you, when he met that woman at the well, you know what he'd done to her? He forgave her and told her to go and sin no more. When he met Nicodemus, he was a religious leader. You know what he told him? He didn't say, man, if I hang around him, I might get a promotion. He said, you've got to be born again. You know how you treat religious leaders? Hit them with the gospel. Don't suck up to them. Don't try to... Be, uh, don't, don't try to say, well, now, if, if, I, if I get in with this crowd of preachers, then they know the mayor and they know the, and I'll move up the spiritual ladder and I'll be important and my picture will be in the paper. That is not the way Jesus handled people. You meet a religious person, rebuke them. You meet an old down and out drunk, be good to them. I picked up a boy over yonder hitchhiking the other day on the interstate after I left church the other night. And uh, man, he was a nut, I'm telling you. That boy, he's about 22 years old. I don't recommend the ladies pick up hitchhikers, uh, unless it's a lady hitchhiker. But uh, I picked that boy up, and I took him up to, to Nebo, and I said, where are you going? He said, man, not, I said, what do you do? He said, I just hitchhike all over the country, man. Now, the only reason I picked him up is because I think that's what the Lord wants me to do. My flesh says, look, you as healthy as I am, get out here and buy your own car. That's what my flesh says. That's what dominates some of y'all. But my spirit said, is that what Jesus would do? So I picked him up and I put him in the car. You say, ain't you afraid that he'd kill you? No, I'm afraid the Lord will. There you go. And uh, I put him in there and he, I, I looked at him. I thought, I could probably, he ain't going to kill me. I could probably be, beat him up. And uh, he put his stuff in the back and uh, me and him started going up the road. And I said, man, what's, what's, what's up with you? He said, all I do is hitchhike. That's all I've done for five years. And he said, I'm going to meet some girl, a 19-year-old girl in Asheville, and then she'd been living on the street for five years. I said, Lord, and I'm telling you, people, he smelled all horrible. You would not believe how horrible. Whoever that 19-year-old girl is, I hope and pray her nose don't work. Because <laughs> he was here and there. I mean, I, as soon as he got in, I put the vents on fresh. I always put them on fresh. And then blow them right between me and them and open the back windows. That's, that's the way you can do. You know, and it takes that smell out. I mean, it's horrible. I, this guy ain't had a bath in a month. I said, where do y'all sleep? He said, we sleep in tents. I said, why do you do that? And he very, it sounded like an educated young man. He said, my parents live in Wilmington. And I, and I thought, what in the world, man? He, he said, I just want to enjoy life. I thought, there are people in prison got it better off than you do, dude. They're laying down on a bed getting three meals a day, watching TV. You're out here sleeping under bridges and walking with this big old thing on the interstate. I'd have to get paid $20 an hour to carry that thing up the interstate. And he thought that was freedom. He thought, I'm free. I thought, you crazy nut. You'd be better off to work at McDonald's and have a bed at night. Don't you all agree with that? But he said, I'm free. Whatever. And, uh, uh, but anyway, I, I talked to him a little while and let him out. And, you know, I've been accused of that. People say, well, you're just too good to people. You're just too good to people. Mom, you say, Danny, you're too good to people. People, people take advantage of me. And I said, but Mom, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? And there are some times when you can't, just, you can't just let people run over you. But what did Jesus do with the Pharisees? What did Jesus do? with a woman that was caught in sin. What did Jesus say to the woman caught in adultery? He didn't say, you good for nothing thing, we're kicking, you get out of here, I never want to see you again. He said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Quit your devilment and do right. That's what he said. The way you get acquainted with somebody is hang around their family. That's why we ought to go to church. These people that say it don't matter if you go to church or not, they're wrong. It does matter. You don't know it, but what I've said here tonight has helped you. What I've said here tonight has pushed you to do the right thing. 
Little things will come up tomorrow next day and it'll hit you what I said. That's why I listen to preaching every day. I listen to preaching every day because it helps guide you, keeps you in line. And that's how you acquaint yourself with the Lord. Anybody got a question or comment right quick and, and we're going to pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Anybody else? You know, I didn't mention our business meeting Saturday night, y'all. Don't forget, church business meeting Saturday night, 